My God, by now you'd think I'd have collected enough of these things, wouldn't you? Uh, yes, that's the autofocus. Struggles to do its job. Uh, I'm going to show off another sword. Another tr wooden training sword in this case. Unlike a lot of the other ones that I've uh, bought myself recently, this is actually a bona fide legitimate training sword. There's no bend to the blade, so to speak, but you do have quite a comfortable grip. There's nothing to show off too much uh, as far as you know the texture is concerned. It's got a lovely look to it in its own right, uh, and it feels quite solid while also feeling just a little lighter than you would expect from. Well, I can tell. It just sort of... I'm not entirely sure, but I get the feeling that it might actually be hollow on the inside. I'm not entirely sure of that, and I don't want to go and really have at it to uh, try to break and see what might be going on there, but everything is put together very, very nicely. Obviously, the disadvantages of any kind of camera is that you can't really get all the angles you'd like to look at. But this is meant as a proper training sword. You've even got a fairly hefty, decent pommel at the uh, at the rear, and a cross guard that actually looks like it could protect your hand somewhat more than any of the others that I've looked at. Now, fa in fairness, the majority of the others have all been either toys or just, uh, well, toys. Uh, to be brutally honest, this, on the other hand, feels like a quite legitimate uh, training aid. Something you could quite safely practice sort of, uh, techniques with uh, by yourself or with a sparring partner. Obviously with all the uh, requisite uh, protective gear. And it's a good length in its own right. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to zoom out a bit until we can see the whole thing and then I'm going to bring out this bucken that you've already seen in a previous video just to give you some idea of size comparison. So let's put the blades just there and just so let's pull out just a bit more, a little bit more, there we go. Right, so you can tell pretty much straight away the length going by the uh, by the pommels, but, well, not by the pommels, by the cross guard sections. They are, well, there's just a bit of difference there, there's about a hand's width, so to speak, just a bit more than that kind of distance from the tip to the hand guard and if we go by where the pommels should be and they are roughly speaking the same sort of length uh, of course the disadvantage there is that the bottom has is that the blade itself is still shorter but it has more overall leverage here it's meant as a two-handed so but there's nothing to stop you from using it one-handed it's just it's the same to be used two-handed and so on and so forth as for which is better, the longer length versus shorter length and so on and so forth, that's not something I'm going to get into. That's uh, going to depend on your own personal style of fighting and so on and so forth. There's absolutely nothing that would have stopped them from perhaps having a longer handle on this. You know, even the genuine originals probably would have had some variety there. But you can still use both hands on it quite easily just by putting your other hand on the bottom, on the pommel, just to help provide more power when you do stuff like that. And just to give you a little demonstration, you might have heard the clatter before. Yeah, that's a quite satisfying noise. Let's just see, was there any real damage? Well, you can see the indentations where it's collided with each other. Yeah, that's quite good. Although this one's got much thicker uh, feel to it. I kind of get the feeling that if you were to go at it, you know, really go at it with these two uh, particular practice swords, the chances are this one would probably end up coming off a lot worse than this one, simply because this is a lot more solid. Mm. So it might be worthwhile just investing in whatever this kind of wood is, whatever the material is, to see if uh, you can make stronger practice swords like this. But I do love the attention to detail. It's not the most elaborate design ever in the terms of detail on art styling and so on and so forth, but it does look pretty good. I mean, this could take pride of place just on the wall by itself, uh, as well as be used, you know, as practically as possible. Some modifications could be done. I could quite easily 
applied some more varnish on it just to uh, just to you know make it look a little nicer than it already is. It's actually in all accounts uh, the smoothest feeling of the practice swords, toy swords, and so on and so forth that I've actually got my hands on. You will notice the tip here is completely perfectly flat. And that's presumably to make sure that you don't end up uh, running somebody through for real. Because even with a wooden blade, so to speak, you could still conceivably run somebody through. There's any number of uh, horror movies where somebody's been running around in the dark, in the woods, uh, not watching where they're going, and they've impaled themselves on a, a great big tree trunk. Uh, trunk, or twig, or branch, or something like that. Yeah. But I still think I could modify this by perhaps uh, coming up with a bit more elaborate design work on the pommel bit here. It's, it could do, look like it could do with just a tad bit more rounding out because that section there looks a bit longer than that and so on and so forth. It just looks a little mismatched in some regards. But, you know, that's no B. And obviously adding a leather bit here just to, you know, provide a bit more authenticity, I suppose is the word. But, all in all, it's a very nice, lovely piece.